You should uh, also start saying smash that like button. Like, sm- <laughs> no. 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 Coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas, for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony! It's Austin, you gotta make more noise than that. The people at home have to know what the fuck's going on here. You guys ready for a great night tonight or what? Oh, shit. Here we go. How about a hand for the band, everybody, huh? Unbelievable. That is the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Band. How about a hand for my friends Michael Gonzalez on the drums? Matt Muling on guitar. The great D Madness on the bass over here. And my good friend John D's on the keys, everybody. We're doing this shit tonight, Red Band. This is Kill Tony live in Austin, Texas, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, the two best strip clubs on the planet of Earth. Uh, we're all filled up on CM Smokehouse, thanks to our friends from CM Smokehouse of Bolden Acres and Cade and Yoni. And uh, we've been drinking Canteen and Cantina, delicious vodka soda and uh, margaritas in a can. So good. It's really so good. A lot of those canned drinks, you know, it just doesn't feel like a real mixed drink. Cantina, Cantina, it's different. Be sure to subscribe to the show is what I was told by one of my advisors to start saying. If you're on YouTube right now, click the subscribe button. All the kids are doing it. That's a really big deal. Before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, Red Band and I, uh, we like to drink. We like to drink, and Red Band sleeps in until 3 or 4 p.m. the next day, but I like to go golfing in the mornings, and one of the things that clears up my hangover and keeps me hydrated, my favorite thing in the world is the liquid IV. You know, cooler weather nowadays makes it easier to miss signs of dehydration, like overheating or perspiration, which means it's even more important to keep your body properly hydrated. Flu season is in full swing. Proper hydration and vitamins can help support a strong immune system. Making hydration a priority helps us feel healthier on a day-to-day basis and fuels us to our highest potential. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. You know all about this red band, and they have new delicious flavors. Yay, Tony, me and you are on that up-and-coming podcast, Joe Rogan Experience, the other day. Oh, that and young buck. Yeah, that young buck. He's, and been, we... get, he's been getting some press coverage. <laughs> and we didn't even get paid, but we all talked about how much we love liquid IV because we yep. all are addicted to it. And not only does the product taste great, they have amazing flavors like water melon, strawberry, lemon lime. Are you going to be enjoying a few extra drinks now that the holidays are approaching? This is what you need. I t- like you said, I take one before I go to bed. I take one when I wake up. I have one with lunch. I take so many of these that I don't even drink anything else other than liquid IV They now. make me a better golfer. You know, I pay attention to these things. How does coffee affect me? How does muscle milk affect me? Coffee makes me a little bit jittery. Maybe I'm focusing. Maybe I'm overthinking during my swing. Liquid IV clears my mind and strengthens my body. It has five essential vitamins. It's incredible. Healthier than sugary sports drinks, cellular transport technology, the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients straight into my bloodstream. Uh, You can grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TONY at checkout. That's 25% off anything, and we really believe you should try this. 
25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code TONY at liquidiv.com. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, Red Band. I got the new uh, Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. Manscaped is, uh, supports the show, and they are the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. They offer precision-engineered tools for all your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. And I'm telling you, Red Band, I'm dead serious. I use it on my face. I I'll know. go back and yeah. forth to my balls, to my face, and my asshole, and then to, I'll shave my mustache with it, and I sort of smell my asshole on my mustache like it's a whole thing. But I, the thing works. The I guys trust love it. that. Don't I they? trust it. I'll go ass to mouth with my lawnmower 3.0. Redman, you do this too. Yeah, I have this new shower that has one of those benches so I can put one leg up there and really get in there with their amazing lawnmower. <laughs> 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 no, it's uh, if I don't do it. And it has, you know, the Lawnmower 3.0 has one of those LED lights which illuminates the grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. They also just upgraded the motor. It's now 7,000 RPMs Brrr. with quiet stroke technology. Ooh. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show off your mower loud and proud because the intelligently designed stand is convenient charging dock which is powered by USB. Hey, look, if you're listening to us speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code KILLTONY at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will we. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code KILLTONY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code KILLTONY. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? All right. Every single week, we give you one of the best comedians, or sometimes two of the best comedians. Sometimes you never know what's going to happen here. One of the cool things about this show is that this guest seat, while often filled with extremely famous, powerful comedians, another thing that we like to do here, just as we introduce you to comedians, is we pull them out of the bucket. One of the things we do with this guest spot is expose you to some of the brightest comedic talent in the world before other shows do. I like to think... We were the first to tell you that Tim Dillon's going to be one of the biggest comedians in the world. I think we had Shane Gillis on way before a lot of the big shows did. This is one of those episodes that you're going to say, I was there when that guy wasn't even that famous yet. He was the guest on Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest is Hans Kim, everybody! His first ever time on the panel. The little baby is growing up right in front of our very eyes. He was made a regular just a few months ago. And now he sits here at the table. My, how they grow so fast. Thank you, Tony, for this huge honor. <laughs> I, will not, I will not dishonor my Kill Tony family. Thank you very much, Hans. We're very excited to have you. You famously have taken the show over by storm writing and performing a brand new minute every single week. You've made out with over 23 strippers on the show. You've made out with 14 normal girls. Don't laugh, gentlemen. Your girlfriend could be next. This guy is an absolute machine. Has more antibodies than anybody in Austin. We've tested. Uh, and we're very excited to have you here, Hans. I'm excited to be here, and if a uh, comedian bombs, you have to kiss me. Yeah, we're going to have some fucking fun tonight. You guys ready to start this show? Austin, I'm going to say it again. You have to do better than that. Are you guys ready to start this fucking show or what? We are the number one live podcast in the world. It's all about stand-up comedy, people. A bunch of people signed up for the chance to perform 60 seconds on this stage. You know their 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Ryan J. Ebelt is in Los Angeles drawing tonight's episode. He draws every single episode. He draws every single tour poster. That's all available at RyanJEbelt.com, including Kill Tony the Bingo Cards, where you can play bingo while watching the show and uh, follow along, see if you get bingo. Um, so a bunch of people signed up. You guys ready to meet a stranger? 
your first comedian performing in uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight. We shall start with chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, in a bucket that I cannot control, the first name I pull is Miss Amy O. Wow. It says Supergirl, Miss Amy O slash Supergirl. Wow, this show is crazy. Halloween's in two weeks, guys. Trick or treat. I have no idea. Hans, I'm going to bomb so I can kiss you. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm fucking mind blank. Can I just stand here and look cute? <laughs> um, y'all want to know why I'm Supergirl? I'm going to tell you why. Because I love to emulate awesome fucking women. Don't you love awesome women? Yes! And even though I'm carrying concealed tonight, you know, I, I really do. I really do feel good about being up here on the Kill Tony show. And, and I am drawing a blank right now because I've never been first. I'm always last. My whole life I've been last. I was last to make parole. And here I am. Thank you for me out. Crazier than ever, Miss Amy O, everybody. Holy shit. For those of you that don't know, Miss Amy O made her debut on this show about a month ago. She's been on twice since then. She's very lucky with this bucket. I don't know what kind of voodoo she's doing. I'm still uh, pregnant with William's baby, so I have to be careful. Miss Amy O, you are crazier than shit. Uh, I'm glad you're back on the show. When I saw you, I thought, it's a crackhead. It's a meth head. Oh, it's Supergirl. You do look like you got changed in a phone booth tonight, though, I so... <laughs> Very authentic Supergirl outfit. Yes. Miss Amio, what made you dress like that tonight? Well, I was at the Goodwill in Flower Bluff down in Corpus Christi, and I found this for $2.99. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you can't beat that. And I love that. DC characters, and, Mel uh, and I had to call my brother-in-law to find out which freaking uh, universe I'm from, so I didn't know. Because oh. <laughs> I don't really... Watched them. I thought I was Damn. Marvel, but basically. Shut yeah. the fuck up, Miss yeah, Amio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will do I'll that. I'll tell you. I gotta Good be honest, uh, Miss Amio. I gotta be honest with you. With that wig, if someone had 15 shots of tequila, you're actually pretty fuckable. Uh, I mean, drink canteen and cantina. It's canned uh, margaritas and vodka sodas. What do you think, Hans? Am I fuckable? Oh no. Um, Hans, what I have a rule. Miss Amio. I have a Miss rule. Miss Amio. Miss Amio. Miss Amio. Yes, Hello. Sir. How are you? You're on a live show. How's it going? I'm going to ask Hans Kim what he thought about your performance, so you shut the fuck up while that happens. Uh, I wish uh, Miss Amio spent as much time on her jokes as her outfit. Ah! <laughs> Whoa. Hans Kim. Wasting no time. A lot of people are saying Hans is already in the running for guest of the year I after that one love it. I love reference. Yes, yes. Miss Amio, anything crazy happen in your normal life this yes, week? Yes, lots yeah. of crazy things are happening. Really, they are. Um, my mother, who's still alive in wow. the nursing home, yes, I took her outside the other day to watch the sunset, and, and she discovered that there still is a sunset. Yes. <gasps> wow. You are wild as shit. Miss Amio, what's your sex life like? We know you have a boyfriend that is uh, uh, seemingly mad at William Montgomery for making jokes about hooking up with you. Is this guy banging you? Are you sexually active? What's going on down there? I, um, actually, I mastered masturbation, so, uh, you know, uh, I'm very self-sufficient. And, 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 and <laughs> Jesus. I have a very lucky husband. And, uh, yeah. He, what, do you, uh, what do you use to masturbate with? Uh, well, a Swiffer when, when, or well, something I, like I, that? Get, all, I know what get all the dust out first? You gotta fucking. Okay, you're gonna ask the question and I'm gonna answer the question. But, but if you will allow me, I will tell you in prison. Oh, I'm know, talking too much prison, for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, that, it's that train thing again. I, uh, forgive me. But the question I would like to answer in prison, how did I masturbate? How did mind? you masturbate in prison? Go right okay, ahead. Very, very carefully and quietly so it's not a gangbang, you know? And, 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 and they used to, y'all, your tax dollars used to send in little tiny tubes of toothpaste 
about this big, you know, and you get some tissue and this is a real there. human being, and everybody. Take, and this you isn't, take the rubber gloves. We didn't like know? tell her what to do but, or anything. This but is, that's your tax dollars at work, guys. All right. Yeah, that's all your right. tax dollars at work. Free dildos. Thank you. For those of you just listening to the podcast, not watching the video, a lot of the audience members are vomiting right in their seats right now, picturing Miss Amy O masturbating within anything whatsoever. I was cuter then. Amy, how do you make money? How do you survive? I own a I own an eighteen wheeler with my husband, and we drive in the oil field. Wow! I, he does. I just do the paperwork, wow. and I miss him a lot. Yeah. You miss you miss your husband a lot. Yeah. Well, William helps. What? William Montgomery helps. The oh, dark gotcha. hours. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, Miss Amy. <laughs> Get a little bit more insane every time I see you. Uh, I like your style. I li- it seems as though you're having a lot of fun with the show, and I'm glad that very clearly this show, Equal Opportunity, anybody can get pulled out of that bucket, and you are proof of that. How about one more time for Miss Amy O, everybody? That's a new minute for Miss Amy O. We're going to keep this show moving along. Oh, shit. Hans, you want to give her a little kiss? Yes. You guys think Hans should give her a kiss? Give him, give her a little kiss. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. All right, Hans, get back here. Hopefully, you guys sold your stock on Hans right before that. I think her kryptonite is punchlines. I've heard of a cold sore, but you might get an old sore. That's the original strand of herpes right there he just got. The OG, none of these variants. Miss Amy O got herpes during Woodstock 1. Your next comedian goes by the name of Dale Turk, everybody. Here we go. A brand new minute from Dale Turk. Vulcan Cast Company, how are we doing? <laughs> Halloween's coming up and I have a confession to make. My wife's a witch. And I said witch, not bitch. She is, but that's a different joke. And it usually doesn't bother me, but uh, there was one morning I woke up early, as I do, because I work. She doesn't, because witch. And uh, I was going through my laundry basket to get my underwear, my socks, everything I needed, and I reached in and my hand just crumpled on this soft laundry. And I go, what the hell is that? I move it to the side, and there's just just a plethora of rocks. So I go, all right, move them to the side, reaching again. My hand crumples again, and I go, all right, something's going to happen here later, but I don't have time. So I move them aside, and I one more time reach in. My hand crumples again, and now I'm pissed. I run back to my bathroom, boot the door open, and go, why is there a rock lasagna where my underwear is supposed to be? And my wife wakes up, "Eh, what? And I go, I'm not a geologist. Why are there rocks where my socks are? And she's wiping her eyes and trying to wake up. And, uh, the socks and the rocks. I, uh, sweetie, I don't know. I got stoned last night, and I was like, typical witch. Always getting stoned. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Holy shit. Dale Turk making Miss Amy O look like Richard Pryor up here. <laughs> Holy shit, man. What the fuck was that? Is <laughs> Is this your first time doing stand-up comedy? <laughs> I've been doing it for about six months. Six months. Okie dokie. Uh, yikes. My goodness. Uh, Dale. Wowie. Where have you been doing comedy for six months exactly? Austin, Texas. Okay. How's it been going for you? Uh, about that good. Yeah. <laughs> What made you want to start stand-up? Were people telling you that you're funny? Who no, told? not at all. Okay. <laughs> what made you want to do this? How old are you? I'm 31. What do you do for work? I am a line cook at a bistro in you North Austin. You said 31, Austin. right? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, line cook at a bistro. And what made you start now? Um, long story short, I was... Uh, I, well, I, was... I don't think you really know how to make long story short. Uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty sure you're the last person I would trust. To make a long story short. Uh, go ahead. Long story short, what? I, uh, I, after I got out of the Army, I bought a house, and uh, the, just the home life wasn't really working, so my wife and I sold the house, had a little bit of money to come down here and get a fresh start. 
Wow. So you were in the army? I was. Okay. What uh, What did you do in the army? My guess is bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That jokes. That joke's been said on the show 375 yeah. Yeah. times, but it's it works every goddamn time. You know what I'm saying, Texas? Uh, what did you do in the army? I was a mechanic. Wow. Okay. What did you fix? Everything tanks. Ev- everything that had wheels. Tanks have tracks, so I didn't oh. get to do that. But everything okay. else that had wheels. Okay. Awesome. And now what? Now what do you do? Like, what do you do for fun? Uh, I like to paint and draw. Um, I play video games that are really old. Uh, run. I mean, I, I'm just kind of a... Where do you run? Around. <laughs> In circles? Jeez. Really fast? <laughs> if I can find one. With your helmet on? Dale Turk. Any fun facts about you, like uh, your family or anything like that? What do your parents do? Uh, my parents are both teachers. My dad's a retired major from the military. Um, uh, we adopted two kids. They adopted two kids a couple of years ago, so I have some adopted siblings in my life. Oh, okay, because they didn't get fulfilled when they had you as a son. <laughs> They're like, we need, to, we need to get some real fucking kids. We'll no, do they, anything. It's like the lottery. Dale's <laughs> out here bombing everywhere, just fucking eating shit sandwiches. No, I'm pretty sure my dad hates me. He, uh, when I got back from the army, he said two things to me in the same month. One month, he was like, I'll give you $10,000 to move to North Dakota oil fields and start over. And I was like, where the fuck did we get $10,000? We live in a tiny house. And a couple months later... I think you ask too many questions. I know. <laughs> I think you should have taken the money and run, my friend. He definitely didn't say, here's 10000 bucks. Go start stand-up comedy in Austin, Texas. A highly competitive market for stand-up comedy. Um, all right. And then uh, not too long after that, he sat me down. He's like, Mother and I have been talking, and we really think it'd be good for you to get deployed. Uh-huh. I was like, thanks a lot, Dad. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like your dad's a major asshole. It's true. It's true. What rank did you get up to in the Army? I was a specialist. Okay. All right. That's what they just get call mechanics. <laughs> for the honestly, for the most part, yeah. It's kind of this like it's the last rank you get before you actually get like command of anything. Did you ever have to do any combat or anything like that? Like, does does the mechanic ever get a gun or anything, or is it just like Dale, hurry up, we need you on a tire right away. <laughs> we got a flat tire. Yeah, it was it was a lot of just regular just maintenance on the vehicles. Um, I did uh, I was part of the Hemet record team, and that's basically just a glorified tow truck. Wow. Okay. Okay, Dale. Wow. Where'd you meet your wife? Uh, I met my wife in Boston uh, about seven years oh, ago. Oh God, she's from Boston. She's from the North Shore. Oh, that's oh. the does worst. She, she have the, does she have the accent? Does she? No, thank God. Her dad does. She oh, doesn't. she doesn't have no. the accent. No. Wow, look at that. What do you do? You beat it out of her, or something like that? <laughs> Wake up, Dad. <laughs> I'm from Boston. It's the fucking worst. What does she do for work? She, uh, she's a witch. What does she do for work? She's a witch. <laughs> what is she, the fuck, Dale? <laughs> what does that mean, Dale? She, uh, she reads tarot cards professionally. She makes spell jars. She sells her trinkets and stuff. Oh, my God, dude. You'd think this would all help you with your act a little bit. Like, I think maybe she could fucking switch your luck around or something <laughs> like that. Jesus. How's Christ. her hygiene? How low is her hygiene? She's not a hippie. She she keeps herself clean. Really? Yeah. Doesn't smell like a witch's brew down there. <laughs> <laughs> One cup of burnt child hair. <laughs> it's, a, it's one of the sound effects is an official witch laugh. <laughs> All right, Dale. Anything else crazy we should know about you before we let you head back to obscurity? Nothing that comes to mind right now. Dale Turk, everybody. There he goes. His Kill Tony debut. Dale, here you go. Take one of these little joke books. You're a long way from a big joke book, my friend. I mean, absolutely incredible. Thanks to Bonsai for these joke books. Right? Yeah, the great Bonsai, Adrian Cavazos. Follow him on Instagram at Bonsai with a Z in the middle. Bone Z I. Your next comedian is Colin O'Mara, everyone. Colin O'Mara. I heard a little bit of a pop from the comedian section, so this might be promising here. Normally, they only support really funny people. 
Oh, we know this guy. Here he is, oh, yeah. his third time on the show. It's Colin O'Mara, everybody. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, so my dad died four years ago last month. Um, hate to change the mood. Uh, it was September 10th, you know, so the comedian in me is like, one more day and I get a way better joke out of this. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, I wait a little, you know. You know, the worst part is he killed himself. Sorry to bring it up, you know, but it's like, you know, and he did it at like 11 o'clock on September 10th p.m. And he was 63 years old. So I was like, you waited 63 years. What's 63 more minutes? You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, you know, it's fucking, oh, that's dad, depressed. You know what I mean? Fucking, what are you going to do? <sighs> Just mourn, I guess. I don't know. I, uh, I don't think we're ever going to get a black pope. Not... Not because of racism or anything. It's just like black people don't fuck kids like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> kind of like a white guy thing. You know, right, sir? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You, lo- you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. I, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a white guy thing. You know, every time I say that, everyone's like, what about Michael Jackson? And I'm like, yeah, they said Mike was fucking kids after he was white. Case in point. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and R. Kelly. R. Kelly deserved to get canceled. I'll say it. For appropriating the white man's culture. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Fucking kids, it's a white man's game. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Colin Thank you. O'Mara. Thank you. With a good joke there at the end. The old black Pope joke. Yeah. It's a really good point. Really smart. Thank you. That's true. Why Number do you one. think it is the black men? Uh, you know what? I'm going to ask Hans Kim this question. <laughs> Hans, why do you think it is that black men don't molest very often? Probably because they're being molested by society. Oh, there you go. There. Hans always has good answers to things like this. Hans, one of the wisest young men that I know. That's why I asked. You. That's why I ask Hans the tough questions. An absolute genius. Uh, Colin, so your father killed himself on September 10th at 63 years old. Shot yeah. himself in the head. Is that correct? Yeah, we talked about it last time. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, we're all hoping that the last comedian follows in your father's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my dad was successful, so it's... Yeah. You know. Yeah, knowing the last guy, he'd probably miss shoot his goddamn ear off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Colin, what else? September 10th, is that a special date for you? Do you ever do anything to, uh, to celebrate uh, your father's uh, suicide? Uh, pretty much just the usual, you know, just, you know, just, I didn't, like, this year it came up and I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? I was like, you know. What do you think, Hans? Did your dad molest you? No. No, I never got molested. People ask all the time. No, you two aren't really white. Yeah. 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 I was an altar boy for years, too, not fucking you, once. You just don't remember it, man. You, it'll take you a couple of, That's you know, years. That's a good point, no. Yeah. Could be. It, it could, could be. be. You could have been the first one to shoot him in the head, you know what I'm saying? Ah, because of cum. Yeah, oh, it. now yeah. we're awing. Now we're awing, Austin. Oh. oh, oh, I feel bad now. I came to a comedy show to feel bad. Yeah, yeah I, it's funny. Like, that first joke does well with, like, comics. A lot of times audience members just get sad. And then, like, last time I was on, people come up to me and they're like, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. And I was like, I don't fucking know you. You know what I mean? I was right. Like, I What's up with your mom? How, uh, what, she's what, she's chilling, you know. She's she's cool. You talk to her often. Yeah, I call her like every other day or something like that. All just, right, yeah, good. You know, good. She's, you know, she's you got have a lot COVID. of brothers and sisters. I got two older brothers. Yeah, two older brothers. What do they do? Uh, both unemployed, I think. Um, how do you uh, make a living, Colin? How do I? Oh, I actually. Just, where's Jack at? Jack works here. Okay. I don't know where he's at. Colin, he got me over, a job at a moving over place. here, Colin. No, I was saying, uh, he got me a job at a moving place. I'm starting on Thursday. Because remember, last time I was on, couldn't fucking. Where are you starting on Thursday? A moving place. A moving. Mo- moving. Ah, a moving yeah, company. Moving company. Yeah. You're going to starting move that. stuff. Yeah. Okay. For money. You know what I mean? All yeah. right. And then I cut hair on the side. I used to do that uh, back home, too. But like I said before, I don't have a license, so I can't actually be a real barber. So I just oh. cut comics and shit like that. Oh, you know I mean? very interesting. What's your love life like, Colin? You seem like a real douchebag. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> wondering. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm Girls single. tend to love guys like you. Yeah. I'm interested to see how yeah. honest oh, you're oh, going to be. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I'm single. Yeah, uh, as can be. Yeah, how much. often do you get laid, Colin? What's uh, your sex been, life like? Honestly, God, um, this won't surprise you. Not Well, I, not often, because I get whiskey dick all the time. Uh, it's like a recurring thing. So, yeah, it's happened twice since I came here. And I was like, you know, so. What happened twice? Whiskey dick, you know, like I, I get too drunk to have sex. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. B- 
but we so, remember from past episodes, he drinks like ridiculous. Like, yeah, he's yeah. had like full cups of Jameson yeah. before on yeah. the show. And now like fans from the show will recognize, be like, you're the fucking Jameson guy. And I'm like, oh, stop. You know, I feel like, like a hot girl at a bar because they come up to me and they buy me drinks now. And I'm like, holy shit, like, this is insane. Right. You know, well, they still try and fuck me. But, you you know, are one of the hottest cool. girls at this bar. Uh, <laughs> so I look around. Yeah. yeah. All right, Colin. You've it's been on the right show here. a bunch. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly, yeah. I'm completely sick of you. Uh, <laughs> but there it. you go. You got another Thank good minute in. I really you. like your Black Pope joke. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank We're going to keep it moving. That. There goes Colin O'Mara. We're on pace to set a record for most bucket pulls ever in a show. You guys want to do this shit tonight? Probably won't. There's probably... I'd imagine one of the road episodes we probably went crazy. All right, your next comedian is Dave Caggiano. Dave hey. Caggiano. Hey. Amerigo Vespucci. Here he comes. A very confident, steady walk. This is Dave Caggiano. What's up, Austin? Hell yeah. Uh, my dad's a cop. I'm a firefighter. Neither one of us are valedictorian. Um... Yeah, I come from like a, like a long line of like construction workers, you know, but we were never the project engineer. We were always the bricklayer, you know? Like we were always the guy that was like, could know, like figure out how to put like a rectangle on top of another rectangle. Like that's as far as we got. Like we're not smart. Like I'm Italian, but I don't think I'm related to any like great inventors like Leonardo DiCaprio or whatever, <laughs> you know? I'm pretty sure my ancestor was the guy that like cut the marble into a giant block before Michelangelo turned it into a masterpiece, you know? He lived in ancient Rome, but talked to the Boston accent. He's like, what, he named it David? What's he fucking carving himself a boyfriend? He's not even union, you know, he's not even union? A fucking scab? Dude, I'm so dumb and blue collar. My ancestor's biggest hang up with Michelangelo wasn't that he was gay, it's that he was a non-union painter. All right, guys, I'm Dave Caggiano. Thank you. Dave Caggiano. Welcome to the show, Dave. How are you, my friend? I'm all right. How you doing? So you're a firefighter here. Yeah. Is that here in Texas? No, uh, Boston area. Oh, you're from Boston? Yeah. Wow, this Another weekend I performed at the Boston Garden. Have you ever heard of that before? I don't know, it's the home venue? of the Boston Celtics and the Boston Bruins. So Boston. Yeah. You, so that's unbelievable. Yeah. For a Rogan? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was sick. Yeah. Just wanted to let you know what the fuck yeah, you're dealing with yeah, right here. Fuck me. Is that you're from that place, but meanwhile... Yeah, I, I work in the fucking bleachers in the back with the scumbags. That's me. That's right. You're a real firefighter? Yeah. Okay. Were you there for like the Boston Marathon a few years ago or anything uh, like that? I worked on an ambulance. Not that. I was, I was in college when that happened. You saved people's lives before? <laughs> I, tr I mean, I try, dude. I do yeah. my best. Jeez. That <laughs> does not sound confident at dude, all. <laughs> Oh my Bro, I just God. told you I'm dumb. That I'm not sounds smart. like the kind of guy that would do CPR to your throat. <laughs> I mean, I tried, Tony. What do you want me to do here? <laughs> I saved lives. I mean, that's a stretch. Come on. I was thinking about this. Nothing day. better than an Italian paramedic, right? This fucking guy. <laughs> I was thinking about today, like, someone dying and, like, as they're losing consciousness, the last thing they hear as they go is, like, a Boston accent. It's like, right. oh, fuck, I think he's having a fucking heart attack. <laughs> They're like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, that does. That sounds like hell. Uh, wow. And your dad's a cop. He's a real cop. Boston cop? Uh, Boston area, yeah. Hell he was like yeah. a homicide detective for a while. Okay. Psycho. Okay. Yeah. Does he ever, did he, was he like a real dad cop growing yeah. up? Did he ever yeah. put his like knee on the back of your neck? Or yeah, I come like from that? a long line of PTSD. So long. Yeah. Oh, you guys have never been hit before? What? What's up? How about mom? What's mom up to? Uh, mom was a flight attendant, real estate agent, community college grad. <laughs> Shout out, mom. Wow. I, you, you were doing so good, Thank and then you. right at the end, you basically called her a dumb bitch. Jeez, uh, she sounded pretty smart until you had to tell everybody is, she's a community college graduate. That's impressive in Boston. We like, yeah, this, we that's like true. That's true. Even though Harvard <laughs> is in Boston, I guess that's impressive. <laughs> Dave, what do you like to do for fun? Um, I run comedy. You exercise. run comedy? <laughs> is that you? Really? Yeah, well, we've me. been looking for you. Wow. Uh, I, I, got paid, I was a paid regular at the comedy store 10 years ago, and uh, what, what are you going to do with me? You fucking run comedy, huh? I was, uh, yeah, I was opening at the garden for Rogan. 
Did you hear how quiet it got when you said that? <laughs> Dave, what's your love life like? You're a firefighter. Anybody going down your pole? <laughs> Hose jokes, pole jokes. Uh, I actually just went through a breakup, so that kind of sucks. Okay. But what happened there? How long were you with this broad? Uh, three years. <laughs> it's a Boston She's firefighter. A lovely... <laughs> I mean, I have to call her a broad, right? She's a lovely lady. If I said what happened with this girl, he'd be like, who, who are we talking about here? <laughs> How long were you with her for? Three years. Three years. Yeah. What happened there at the end? She said that you weren't taking it seriously enough. She wanted a ring around the finger or something like that. Generally, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know a lot of firefighters? We have commitment issues. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Uh, you uh, guys would rather hang out with your Dalmatian <laughs> than uh, <laughs> put a ring on it. That's fun. What did she do for work? Uh, t- she worked in like planning, financial planning, kind of. Wow. TJ Some, Maxx. She didn't even make it through community college, did she? <laughs> Dude. Dave Caggiano. Yeah. What's the most Italian thing about you? Um, besides my nose and eyebrows? Uh... I don't know, dude. Probably, yeah, just my entire fucking uneducated self, I guess. Have That's you seen self. many Saints of Newark yet? No, I haven't. But uh, well, someone said sucks. Nobody just, said just that. that. Oh, you're talking about me. Nobody yeah. said that. They were talking about your ass. Yeah, that's what dude. I thought. Yeah. Uh, Hans Kim, what do you think about this guy? I think this guy is really good looking. You know, I'm sure the people of Boston who are under 5'8 are very safe with him in town. <laughs> <laughs> Decent. This is what the heroes look like in Boston. Tony, you look like a premature baby I rescued from a fire, literally. Did, so. you, hear, did you hear that? Did you hear that response from the audience? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> again, Oz. How premature baby that got rescued from a fire, would you yeah. say? That's what you look like. That was it? That yeah. was the roast joke that you came up with? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's very <laughs> bad, Dave. Premature babies are not 5'9 and 150 pounds of pure Youngstown steel. You know what I'm saying? You fucking pussy. 150 is generous. You pussy ass non hero firefighter. Most firefighters are heroes, not Dave here. God damn it, Fuck Dave. Us. Wow. All right. Uh, Dave, congratulations yeah. on getting pulled out of the bucket here tonight. <laughs> Come back again. What do you? What brings you to Austin? What are you doing here? Uh, it's trip, comedy, vacation. How long are you here for? Uh, tomorrow is my last night. Wednesday I leave. Okay. So, yeah. You do anything else back. fun when you were here in Texas? Yeah. Barbecue, the usual. Barbecue, bars, stuff. Barton there Springs. he goes. Dave Caggiano, everybody. He's on Instagram at Dave Caggiano. <laughs> Dave, here you go. Take one of these. There you go. He caught the baby. Yeah, do I throw like a premature baby, you fucking little bitch? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Why premature? I know. Preemies are cuter than regular babies. And why would I get pulled out of a fire? Does anybody get pulled out of a fire with a fucking white cowboy jacket on? Aaron Specht. Is next. Make some noise for Aaron Specht, everybody. Here we go. We only have one regular here tonight. He's going to close the show. So we're going to keep flying through this bucket. Any sign of Aaron Specht? No, no movement. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Let's pull another name out. Julian Hemmendinger. That's a comedy name if I've ever heard one before. Julian Hemendinger, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is, live, in the flesh. Hello, Viacom Shoe Company. Sorry for looking like a lazy Hitler youth. Uh, You know, it's a good thing that uh, Walt Disney's creations are nothing like him, right? Because then Goofy would be walking around being a huge anti-Semite. We'd get him sitting down with his son, he'd say... My ex, my God, tell you something. The Holocaust, it never happened. I've never even seen a Jew. <laughs> well, maybe I heard one in the attic once. Baruch, a tongue, I don't know. The point is, Maxie, I don't care what those dang Maxikins tell you. The Holocaust never happened. 
Uh, Nazis, huh? Uh, uh, Texas, Nazis. I mean, oh, God, I'm just, I'm falling all over the place here. God damn it, it feels good to be on this stage. There it is. Julian Hemendinger. Is that your real name, Hemendinger? That is my real name, Julian Hemendinger. Hell yeah, man. Where are you from? I am from Washington, D.C. Wow, welcome. What brings you here to Texas? <laughs> Comedy, and I have a lot of uh, friends out here. I've, I've come through a couple times. I love Austin. Okay. How old are you, Julian? I just turned 30. Wow, 30 years old. You look like you could be your own father. <laughs> it's incredible. Why do you think you've aged so poorly? Jewish, I don't know. You're Jewish? Yeah. Oh, Okay. Why did, yeah, why, go ahead, Hans. Kid. Why did you say you look like a Hitler youth? Because my hair's combed to the side. I don't That's know. That's all man. it takes to be a Hitler youth. <laughs> yeah, dude. In that case, Hans looks just like a Hitler youth. Yeah, really does. Jewish people have never fared well with guys named Hans. <laughs> and yet, it continues. Another Jew roasted by a Hans, everybody. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, that's enough. Even I think that's a little too racist. Uh, like a vault. I love it. Uh, so you're born and raised in Washington, D.C.? Yes, sir. What do you do for a living? How do you make money? I actually stream on Twitch. Oh, like, okay. I make just enough that I can do that. What are you streaming? What do you do on there? Uh, I play video games, and I have puppets that... Like yell at me. One of them's a prostitute. You have puppets? Yeah. One of them's named Misty Fisty. The other one's One-Eyed Willie. Wow. I'm really lame, guys. I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. What do you keep in your backpack? Uh, I actually have like a gun for just a mass shoot. No, I'm kidding. That's not funny. I guess. <laughs> uh, I have uh, like. There's juggle. no Jewish mass shooters. Everybody, <laughs> relax. That's a waste of bullets. Yeah, uh, they're too expensive. I, I actually, uh, normally for my set, I, I, like, I have juggling balls and I have a Diablo that I use. Really? You have juggling balls? Yeah. Will you juggle a little sure. bit for it? Can we get some juggling music, guys? Hey! Time to juggle, motherfuckers! Oh, yeah, this is kill... Oh, he's horrible at it. Oh. Wow. He's getting booed. Welcome to Texas. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was some of the least talent I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. He, he was just playing catch with himself at one point. <laughs> Imagine Red Band, would you like to play with my balls? What? I was asking Red Band if he wanted to play with my balls. Oh, of course, you know me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> imagine dropping the. Imagine if this was the Holocaust and he's like, I have a talent, Germans. Watch me juggle. I can be very good, I promise, I swear. Just uh, watch me juggle, Germans. <laughs> right to the head. <laughs> they would shoot you, is what I'm implying. Oh, oh yes. Hemendinger. Yes. Uh, all right. So you twitch professionally. How much money do you make twitching like that? A little bit over a grand. It fluctuates, man. A, a month? Grand, yeah. A month. Okay. Hell yeah. $12,000 a year, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> what kind of games do you play? Do you play like new games or old I, school? I play a variety of things. I was actually one of the first people in the world to get 100 wins on Fall Guys, if that means nothing to Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Yeah, I'm up, to, I'm up to like, I think I have 970 crowns. It's almost wow. a thousand. Yeah, what, pretty pathetic. The, I know. What's a good tip? What's a good secret? Uh, yeah, that's what the listeners definitely want to know. <laughs> Why don't you guys go suck each other off in Nerd Kingdom or whatever the fuck you guys are talking about right now? Jesus Christ! Guess we'll never know. Oh my God, you fucking twitchy motherfuckers! <laughs> Hemendinger, what's your love life like? Are you getting your balls juggled at all? <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I'm single, but I think I, I've been doing all right since I moved to Austin. Yeah? How, how, wait, wait, you moved here? Yes. How long ago did you move here? Two months ago. And how good are you doing? What is that to you? Uh, I've gone on a couple dates, uh, and one of them said they wanted to go on another one, but then later on got off on rejecting me, I think. Oh, wow. And then I went, on, I went on like two or three dates. And okay. Like, I've gotten laid here. Did these date, you, you got laid? Yeah, wow. twice. Okay. All right. I'm counting. Okay. <laughs> My friend Hans here is living a whole different life. What do you think about this guy's uh, story? He's gotten laid twice in a few months. I can't believe that this guy gets laid more than Colin O'Meara. <laughs> yeah. Whoever that is. Andy has, a, Andy has one more father than Colin O'Meara as well. Oh, okay, everybody did forget who that was. All right, very good. Um, well, Julian Hemmendinger, um, while I love your name, your performance was, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Red Band, what did you think about this? It was Disney meets Holocaust. I, I barely remember it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was, uh, I, I don't need you it. You know what, though? Since you only make $12,000 a year, I'm going to give you a big Kill Tony joke book. <laughs> Hell yeah, absolutely. There you go. Julian Hemmendinger. Let's keep it moving along. You guys having fun out there? Let's see what happens next. This looks like a fun name. Make some noise for Nat Rogachevsky. Oh, there's another big pop from the comedians area. They must like Nat Rogachevsky. Here we go. Here he comes. Come on, everybody. Make some noise one more time for Nat Rogachevsky. Yo, what's up? Uh, you ever see, like, a really fat guy, like, uh... Like fixing his hair in the bathroom. Like, what are we doing? Uh, the guy's like, all right, problem solved. <laughs> now they won't know I'm fat as fuck. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, DC Comics just announced uh, their very first transgender superhero. First ever DC Comics transgender uh, superhero. Her name is, uh, what's it? Uh, her name is, uh, wonder if it's a woman. Wonder if it's a woman. <laughs> DC Comics. Yeah, yeah. Yes, keep clapping. Let's keep clapping until the meow. Keep clapping until the meow. I don't have time for my last joke. Keep clapping till the meow. You want to do one more joke? Is that I'll what do you're a quick saying? One. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. go right I'll ahead. Do a quick one. It's, uh, yeah, so I was at uh, HEB the other day. I was getting helped out by a, a, pers a person that was working there. It was a transgender person. Their name was Alex, uh, but they spelled their name A L Y K S. And I was like, uh, look, man, you already changed your name. You don't have to change the name. Nat Rogachevsky. Wow. Awesome. Very, very, very good. Nat Rogachevsky, welcome to the show. Thank you. A fantastic performance. How thank long have you, you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, just over six months. Okay. Wow. wow. That's, That's really crazy. good. Really, really good. Good to see you, buddy. I love your fat guy fixing his hair joke. What thank I you. love about that is you're almost too almost fat yeah, to... Right. Right being able there. to do that joke. You're like 10 pounds away from being the guy yeah. in that joke. So I was like, when I was writing that joke, I was like looking in the mirror. I was like, I don't know, dude. Yeah. I, 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 it's close, uh, yeah. Where are you from? You from Austin, Texas? Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. Wow, what the fuck? Yeah. I just keep pulling people from Boston yeah. since I performed in the Mecca there this weekend. Yeah. That's incredible. Dave is my. Did you know that I boy. performed in the Boston Garden this weekend? Uh, he did Six, it with Joe Rogan. 16,000 people. No kidding. Yeah. In the Boston Garden? Yeah. yeah that sounds about right. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, trans superheroes. I believe we had one of those on the show earlier tonight. <laughs> That's hilarious. There you go. He's, yeah. a, he's laughing over there. It's all good, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Nat, what do you do for work? Uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, gainfully unemployed currently. Okay. I, I don't do shit. What's the last job that you had? Drug dealer. 
Really? Yeah. What kind of drugs? Uh, I sold a shit ton of like Molly and acid and uh Wow. Look at that. There's some fans of Molly in the room. Yeah, these guys sure. are fucking losers, dude. Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, drugs, dude, yeah. yeah. That's just Hard Texas. drugs. Texas absolutely fucking loves drugs. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. Did you just move here? Yeah, a month ago. Okay. What do you love so far about Austin, Texas? What are your favorite things about this city? You can do like a gay joke on stage and not get in trouble. Wow, you get in trouble in Boston, Massachusetts? Dude, so bad. Are you kidding me? No, this dude, I was at, I did this joke at like this super dumb mic in Boston, and uh, it was like a dumb black joke that I was just trying to work out. It wasn't like, I was married to When the you joke. say dumb no, black no, no, joke, no, no. are you saying the that they're dumb, dumb or the no. joke is, okay. The joke was dumb. And uh, this, I walk this lady, and I go outside, and she starts to yell at me about the joke at, at an open mic. And she was like, can you imagine doing that joke for a crowd in Atlanta? And the only other time I tried that joke, when I like, tried to debut it, was in front of a black crowd, and it worked. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it actually works. And she goes, she goes that doesn't matter. And I was like, lady, like, you think you know better right. than they do? Yeah. Yeah, what's white, all out? White lady, right? White, oh, blue dude, hair. Yes, blue hair. Yeah, yeah, and yes, and and clearly presenting as a lady, big old tits. And at the end of the conversation, I'm, like we made up, and I walk away, and she goes, "By the way, my pronouns are he, him." And I was like, "Leave me alone, lady." Like, right? Like, That's enough. It's over. This is in Boston? Yeah, it's bad. Wow. It's if bad. that was in Boston 15 years ago, that lady's yeah. in a river by the end of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Just floating and bloated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say her name, but shouts out to all my friends from Open Mics who fucking hate that lady. Uh, What's up, guys? I bet. You have a real earring there. Yeah. Uh, you have a very legit earring. Yeah. It almost seems like it has some real purpose there. What's up with that? Uh, I thought it looked cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mm. you're a funny guy. Nat Rogachevsky is a funny man. I like this guy. Hans, yeah. what do you think about Nat Rogachevsky? I don't know. You could make a paperclip into an earring. Yeah, uh, that thing is. Uh, that thing is. What are? Uh, now that I see that earring, I gotta ask you. What are your pronouns? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You, you seem so comfortable on stage. Like, yeah. like for yeah. six months, that, that doesn't seem possible. Do you have any reason why, or is just the drugs? Uh. <laughs> I uh, I'm actually I'm a I'm a sober guy. I like uh, I used to do like heroin. So now I just don't care about anything. You know? Wow, <laughs> that's what it is. Former yeah. drug addicts are always some of the funniest yes. people. We've seen this before. Yes. Tim Dillon, Theo Vaughn. There's a lot of uh, a lot of newly sober people that end up uh, being able to obtain a level of funny that is just Very absolutely true. incredible. So that's Very where you true. get your swagger from. I how often so. were you? Uh, how long were you hooked on heroin for? Um, like five years. Wow. Yeah. My goodness gracious. Shooting it up or snorting it? Shooting it up. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. This guy's not <laughs> snorting. Yeah, dude. I, listen, I, I'm not gay. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Don't let the earring fool you, dude. This guy's shooting up. Absolutely doodly. Wow. So how do you get off of heroin? What did you fill that uh, gaping hole with? I did all the I do all the like twelve step stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like consistently all the time. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Look at that. They love you, Nat. You know you're good if you get a I'm sober applause break in Texas. Yeah. Uh yeah. that means you're really talented. Yeah, it's fu- it's funny the reactions you get. Uh I mean I, Nat, <laughs> like you tell women they think you're like a like a nine eleven firefighter. Yeah. Right? Like you're like I'm sober, they're like, Oh my god, you're so brave. Yeah. You yeah. know what's braver actually is uh, never having done heroin. I would say, yeah. for my money. And they're also, it's also like being a 9/11 fireman because you both have to deal with black tar at some yeah. point. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah, baby, that was a good one. I yeah. don't need your laughter. I know because I'm smart. How good that yes. one was. That deserved much more. It's an in-the-moment heroin 9-11 firefighter hybrid super joke, but uh, rewind it for those of you listening to the podcast. Go back 30 seconds and watch me load up and do it again. Uh, just kidding. It wasn't that great. Um, Nat, do you have any special skills or talents? The last guy had juggling balls. 
No. Can you sing or anything like that? You'd... I wouldn't care to. Really? <laughs> How many of you think Nat should sing us a little song here? These people love you, Nat. What do you know how to sing? The band can do anything. These guys are monsters. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that dumb song. Uh, can you freestyle? Yeah. Uh, no, I can't freestyle. I don't know. Keep yelling. Keep yelling. What's that? What are you doing? What is this? The Price is Right? Yeah. It's weird. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Well, no, luckily right. for you, we have some fresh heroin we're going to shoot in your veins yes. right now. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. No, no. Rogachevsky, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. 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 A standing ovation. Had the entire Vulcan guest come and he's singing along. Look at him. He's getting high fives from wow. the audience. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm fucking cool, dude. I bet that... <laughs> Hell yeah. What was better, that or heroin? Heroin. Heroin all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Nate, you are absolutely hilarious. If you had to guess how long of a set you think you can do, how long confidently of a set would you do? Uh, I got a strong 15, for strong sure. I'd love to have you open up the show Thursday at the Secret Whoa! Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nate Rogachevsky, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, absolutely doing it. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Killing Tony here in Austin, Texas. Come on, everybody. Make some noise for Nate, everyone. Wow. I don't know whether he was just extremely great or just the people before him were so terrible that, uh, that it feels like we found a young god here on the show. I feel like I need to start doing heroin. <laughs> All right, we got our first, first real lady here. Make some noise for Mimi Meyer, everybody. She's next on Kill Tony. Hi. Come on, thank one more you. time for Mimi Meyer, everybody. Come on. Thank you. I'm kind of an awkward person. Today this woman said to me, Mimi, oh my God, I call my grandma Mimi. And I didn't know what to say to that. I was like, cool, is she a slut too? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I grew up wearing a purity ring. If you don't know what a purity ring is, it's this ring you would wear so all the boys in school knew you were serious about being a loser. Yeah, but now uh, things have changed. I think Plan B is a great invention. Anybody? Yeah. Who knew that one day I'd be able to walk into any Walgreens and pick up a bag of Doritos and my freedom? <laughs> and you know, ladies, we've all taken it. We've all had unprotected sex. 
Not all of us. Not all of us are fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I come from an exotic place called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Our claim to fame is that we are the city of bridges, which I like. I think it's fitting. That the best part of Pittsburgh is that there's so many great ways to leave. Thank you very much. I'm Mimi Meyer. Mimi Meyer. Feels low. Hi, welcome to the show, Mimi. Hi, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm like shaking. I'm having so much fun. Wow. I love it. This is a lot better than waiting tables like I did today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You do wait tables. I've actually been into your restaurant before and you waited on me and uh, we talked about the potential of you being on the show one day. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've i met, uh, being from Pittsburgh, I don't really run into famous people, so right. it's a new experience You for know me. what's crazy is Friday, I performed in the Boston Garden. I don't know if you guys know that or not. <laughs> and then Saturday, I performed at the PPG Paints Arena, the home of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yes. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that that's exactly <laughs> what I do with my life. <laughs> not to be confused with the week before, it was Madison Square Garden, a whole different... Yeah. Yeah. Just want to uh, get yourself canceled, people. It's the life. <laughs> get yourself canceled. <laughs> I remember when I started working at the restaurant where you came in to eat, my first day of work, uh, I started chatting with this guy, and I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, waiting tables, it's a lot of cardio, it's pretty crazy, I'm so exhausted. And he walked away, and my friend said, hey, Mimi, that was Lance Armstrong. <laughs> wow, you really dropped the ball on that one. Yeah. God, I'm so good at this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mimi, you seem like a wild, wild girl. Uh, you're bit. somewhere between like super dork, but you also seem a little bit freaky. Am I correct? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, you, uh, you referenced unprotected sex at some point in your set. Was that you talking about you, that you have unprotected sex with people? I, I used to work on a cruise ship, so we got kind of weird. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. We talking about what? Carnival cruises or Norwegian? Uh I I worked for I worked for Disney Cruise Line. Whoa! Wow. That means Red Band thinks you hooked up with an African. <laughs> No, uh, just a Jedi. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Holy Wait, shit. And a Jedi? couple Portuguese lifeguards, so, you know. Wow. A real-life Jedi. Absolutely. What, was it the, the new black guy? or What? You no. said Jedi? Jedi. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> sometimes that'll be edited out of the regular podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Mimi Meyer, do you have a boyfriend now? No, I'm single. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts about Hans Kim? Um, <laughs> have, have you ever been with an Asian man before? I, I couldn't date him. He looks too much like my dad. <laughs> really? I'm just kidding. I'm, you no, have, not you have an Asian dad? No, I was joking. Hans, what do you think about this? <laughs> we I were at a party and she was dressed like a stewardess and I was... You what? She, we were at a party together, and you were dressed like a stewardess. I was yes. a boxer, yeah. and uh, you were a bo you were wearing a toga. Yeah, uh, I was wearing the <laughs> toga <laughs> at first. That's uh, a joke where Hans was on Molly. <laughs> yeah, I was on acid. Uh, yeah, and I uh, I'm sorry that you didn't bomb because I kind of want to kiss you, but it's fine. It's Wow. Maybe if I get on the show another time. <laughs> What'd you say, Mimi? I said, maybe if I get on the show another time and bomb. <laughs> right. I think they want me to kiss you. I don't want to pressure you. <laughs> I'll ask for consent. We can film it and put it on TikTok. I can film it and put on TikTok? After the show. If you don't want to do it now, um, yeah, feel, I, uh, sorry, I'm, 
Okay. Turn it down again. Turn it down. <laughs> wow. Just for that, Hans, I'm going to make you eat her pussy right now on the show. <laughs> Mimi, what do you like to do for fun when you're not waiting tables or doing stand-up comedy? What else? Um, I like to... I do like to sing a little bit. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Can we hear a little? Well, you, you have a song that you know how to do? They know how to play uh, Don't Stop Believin'. <laughs> uh, oh, Darlin' from the Beatles. <laughs> you guys know that one? D oh, Madness? You know the Beatles? Oh, darling, please believe me. Okay, yeah. Ma- here we go. Here's a little bit of the Beatles with Mimi Meyer, everybody. Oh, darling. Woo! Oh, please shit. Please believe me. Believe me when I tell you I'll never do you no harm Wow Oh darling If you leave me Okay. Mimi Meyer, everybody. Wow. You know what? After that performance, I'm going to make Hans eat your ass, everybody. So there you go. He eats it with chopsticks, so it's okay. When you told me. Oh, oh wow. She said. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Sorry, I, I was an attention whore. I'm fine. My goodness. <laughs> Wow. Just like Paul McCartney, she doesn't know when to quit, everyone. (laughs) Mimi, you are an absolute little firecracker. I love your energy. You're like if the marvelous Miss Maisel was like a real little Texas pog or something like that. (laughs) Uh, Keep signing up. Come back again. We want to see another minute. There goes Mimi Meyer, everybody. She's on Instagram at the Mimi Meyer. We're, We're flying through this bucket. Yeah, we could do that. Last week we had two massively, uh, two massively obese men get pulled out of the bucket on the same show. I told them that we should do something fun and they should do a weight loss challenge. And we right now are going to do an official weigh-in. How does that sound to you guys, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? This is Trey Peck and Sam Hunter. Everyone, here we go. This is very exciting. Since a week ago, we got a scale with a 500-pound capacity. And these guys are going to have a weight loss challenge during the month of October through the first week of November. And uh, here's the deal. Here's what we figured out. For each pound that you guys lose in the next month, Kill Tony is going to donate $10 for each pound. And if any of you gains any weight, the other one has to give the other one $10 for each pound. Does this make sense? So you can't go up. Here you go. Jump on the scale. Weighing in first is uh, Sam Hunter, everybody. All right. 300 and... Oh, my God. It's fluctuating. It has no idea. Wow. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna guess 334 there. That's what it looks like. Holy shit! All right, here he goes Trey Pack, everybody. <laughs> oh my god, the scales just started sweating. 396 pounds, everyone. Wow. My money's on him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. Trey, how do you feel about uh, what just happened here? Uh, I've not been under 400 pounds in six years. So this wow, is, this is look at that. This is... I've done nothing. I've just eaten barbecue. It's fine. I did, I did not deserve this at all. Absolutely you, incredible. Do you feel do, confident going into this weight loss challenge? There's no chance I'm losing at all. Do you have there's no chance. Do you have a game plan? Do you have like a go-to diet or something that you're going to do? Or? Just starvation is going to be fine. Wow. 
He, he's not going to outweigh my urn. I will die for this. It's yeah. fine. I highly doubt that you're going to die from starvation. I don't <laughs> see how that's possible. Man dies today at starvation. 360 pounds. Uh, I find that to be impossible. I'm pretty sure you're going to survive. Uh, hand the mic over to little Sam Hunter over there. Uh, who, uh, next to you is a tiny little boy, it turns out. <laughs> Sam, what's your plan for the next month? What's your uh, plan of action here? Uh, I'm going to reach out to one of the trainers who I used to work with in college. Oh. And get a fucking shithouse. Wow. Trey's about to run into an absolute buzzsaw. Wow. In the next month, dude. Oh, Let's shit. Let's go, boys. Come on. Oh, my God. Let's that's go. right. He knows how to shake his tits. Show the people. Wow. Let's go. Let's go. No, that's not even muscles. That's just heart palpitations, folks. Well, I'm so excited for you guys, and uh, I wish you both the best of luck. I'm glad that Kill Tony can get behind something as positive as a weight loss challenge here. And I thank you guys for doing it. Feel free to keep signing up for the show and uh, keep doing comedy in the meanwhile. We'll get updates along the way. We're going to see them the first Monday in November, and someone's going to win a bunch of money. (laughs) We should bet. We, I, I t- we should bet on this. Like, I mean, uh, Jesus, imagine if Sam Hunter, or imagine if one of them loses 200 pounds and we have to pay them, what is it, $2,000? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, well, the one dude lo- oh, weighs a lot more than the other guy, so he's probably going to w- lose more, but then when he said the, tr- the other guy said the trainer, uh-oh, You're like, that's, I don't know about that. Anything can happen. <laughs> We're going to see. There's going to be a lot of fucking... Uh, a lot of missed meals between the two of them. Your next comedian is Mason Smith. Back to the bucket we go. Let's meet another stranger together. Mason Smith is next on Kill Tony in Austin, motherfucking Texas. Here comes Mason. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? I'm going... I'm going through a divorce. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I either get that response or, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, I'm going through a divorce. Uh, guys, if your wife ever comes home and tells you that she's feeling empowered, just know there's a divorce around the corner. I'll tell you, it all went to hell after she started going to therapy. She actually, uh, she started getting mad at me about certain things that she's never gotten mad at me before. Like, uh, she got mad at me one night. She said, uh, how come you never give me head scratches and foot rubs without trying to touch my vagina? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry I'm not gay. Mason Smith, hell Yeah. Absolutely doing it. Another incredible performance on this episode. It's a little sleeper episode, folks. This is incredible. Mason, how long have you been doing stand-up? Very, very good set. Uh, th- thank you very much. Three years next month. Three years. Mm. Where were you doing it at? Where are you from? Uh, I've, li- <laughs> I've lived in Boston, Boston for the last eight. <laughs> you see this? What the fuck is this going is on? This is what I did. This is how the universe works. I fucked that city up so fucking good on Friday night that it's following me. I'm telling you. I'm telling. I don't know if you know this. I performed in Boston Garden on Friday. So. I, I think it's, it's considered one of the few mecca arenas of the United States of America. I had heard that. Absolutely. Uh, so Mason, what do you do for work? You seem like a real fucking man. Yeah. So I've been a welder for the last eleven years. You're a welder. Wow. Uh, I told myself when I moved here, though, I'm never welding again. So. Okay, so you've given up the... Uh... Fucking right. I never want to touch a welder again. All right, Aww. so what are you going to do? I'm trying to do comedy, but right now I'm just going to fucking... This is how people end up underneath bridges, Mason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I gonna... swear to God, I came to Texas. I'm never going to do what I was professionally <laughs> trained to do ever again. No, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple part-time jobs for the daytime, you know. Okay. What I got you no thinking? problem working. What, what are you thinking? What's a real man like you thinking about doing part-time job? What uh, I used to work at a liquor store uh, when I first moved to Boston, okay. and that was pretty fun and easy. 
Anything's easy after welding for 11 years. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's real fucking tough work. You, yeah, yeah. You get, I, like, sparks in your eyes and oh, shit. Oh, I've had flash burn. burn. I got burn marks all over me, yeah. You wow. ever think to, like, stick with the welding thing, though, and, like, become something like a seamstress or something? Or, like, something... That's, that's fabric. <laughs> it's a lot... It's not as dangerous as welding, but you're putting two things together. It might be good for you. Jesus fucking Christ. Mason. Mason, uh, what do you like to do for fun? You seem like a real man, so I'm excited uh, to hear what you... Yeah, uh, so before I, like... So I'm going through a divorce, uh, but back in Boston, like, uh, I got a real kick out of... Uh, we'd go kayaking and then in the wintertime just drink a lot and party. I just, okay. I really like just having fun and hanging out. Okay. You know, take drugs every now and again. What kind of drugs are we talking about? Uh, I, I, I got acid tattooed on my arm. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Meet my, meet my friends the nether hour. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Bercy, Bercy, why don't you come up here real quick? What, am I, uh, make, make, put your hands together for my friend Bercy. This is the bass player for uh, one of my favorite local bands, the nether hour. This is... Uh, can it's Hans Kim get a whiskey coke? This is my friend Bercy, everybody. I wanted, since you have acid tattoo on your arm, I wanted you to meet the human responsible for uh, actual acid. This is what acid looks like, everybody. Bercy. Uh, and this is also what acid sounds like. Bercy, why don't you say hi to these people? Hey, what's up, dudes? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> This is literally who Bercy is all the time. If you're wondering, like, hey, I bet he's, like, being a little bit funny for the show right now. Not at all. This is just how it is, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, cheers. (laughs) That's literally all of his catchphrases. Like, if he was a doll and had a pull string, that's what he says. He says, cheers, this is what I do, dude. And fuck yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's a good one. Fuck yeah is one of them, dude. If I was Woody. Uh, Bercy, like just you. so that people understand what I'm talking about here, uh, how often, uh, honestly, without being funny at all, how? Uh, give us a ballpark of how often you do acid. Uh, probably uh, four or five times a week. <laughs> 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 off and on, though. I'll hit up the guy. Yeah, off dude. and on, though. We'll get off on and stage, on, though. We'll Nothing too stuff. crazy. <laughs> just off and on four or five times a week. <laughs> Straight up acid, uh, yeah, which lasts, normal. what, 8, 10, 12 hours or something like that? Uh, the microdose <laughs> might just last like four or five hours, as long as uh, another hour set lasts, you know? <laughs> yeah, Plus dude. the party afterwards, so. I love it. I just wanted you to come say hi. Make some noise for my friend Bercy, hey, everybody. I love you, Tony. You're Hans, welcome. Red Band, the band. Love you guys, yeah, yeah. dude. Cheers, dude. Yep. He held on to the mic a little bit long there. Typical acid trip lasts longer than you want it to. You know what I mean? I love it. So you got to meet what acid looks like there since you have it tattooed on your arm. Uh, Wow. His relationship stuff was so real. Like, they're they're realistic. Uh, Like, where the started complaining about things she never did. Like, that hit close to home, I think, with a lot of people in this audience. Yeah, what what does she do for work? The one Uh, that you're divorcing. She's a nurse, and she just uh, graduated from grad school to be a nurse practitioner. Oh, okay. She got that doctor dick in her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So you left her in Boston, and now uh, you came down here? For all the glory. And what was it, a month ago, you said? Uh, I got here two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Fresh, fresh, fresh blood here in Austin. What part of town are you living in? Uh, I, so, uh, I'm staying with my... Nat's my, my boy. He actually... He married my wife and I. You look like the kind of guy that would get a studio apartment in Round Rock. Am I correct? No, I got one actually, like, near here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. And you live by yourself? Yeah, yep. Very good. Are you think you're going to lose any money in the Hans Kim, what do you think about this? I think that he sells some good acid. I actually took a tab of his acid recently. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you weren't supposed to tell people. It always surprises me how many drugs Hans actually does. Uh, <laughs> very rare in the Asian community. Am I correct? It's like a, it's like a black pedophile. Doesn't happen often in Asian an Asian drug addict. Yeah, I bring great dishonor to my family. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's too bad you couldn't weld your relationship with your wife together. Oh! <laughs> my boy! 
boy. My greatest creation. I love it. Mason, you're so much fun. I loved your set. Here's a big joke book from the great Bones Eye. Come back again. Sign up again. Yeah, can we get a, uh, what do you want, a Jack and Coke? A Jack and Coke for my friend Hans Kim. We're having fun. You guys having fun out there? Very good. Look at all those smiling faces. Zach Goldman is next on Kill Tony. We're flying through it here tonight, folks. Yeah. I like it. We're going through all the... Oh. Hey, guys. Hello? Oh. So, uh... I work uh, the door here, and something happened to me. Race. <laughs> something this week happened to me that seemed pretty racist. Three days in a row, I got called di three different people by the same black guy. One day he said that it looked like Triple H. The next day he said it looked like Paul Walker, and the next day he said it looked like Joe Rogan. <laughs> I I don't believe it. At least I think it was the same black guy. I can never tell. Uh, I've been going to therapy a lot, and I, I like it, but I feel like they don't let me take the blame for a lot of things. Like, pretty sure my dad had nothing to do with me getting drunk and shit on my ex-girlfriend's front porch. I mean, he was there, but it was my idea. Uh, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> there you go, a minute from Zach Gallman. Door guy here at Vulcan Gas Company. A very, very, very good set. Thank You're originally you. from Columbus, Ohio. Correct. You've been on this show before. You're a strong man, yes, ridiculously correct. strong. Um, and uh, we found this out. Is Cody here? Is Cody here from. Uh, he's not. He's not yeah. here tonight. No Cody. God damn it! Because every time you've lifted a midget, you lift him more every time. Yeah, I got. I got the record now with ten. What? So. Oh shit! One of the strippers talked for a second. Uh, <laughs> confusing gibberish. Uh, Zach. Yes. So what's been happening since you've been on Kill Tony? Give us all an update of the last few weeks since we've seen you last. What's going on in your world? Uh, I work pretty much six, seven days a week, and then just trying to hit mics, and uh, I'm very, I'm recognized as the guy who presses midgets. That's right. And also, and also I'm funny. <laughs> yeah. But that's fun. Um, I've just, just been working. I, I mean, that's it. really it. You've been well, going to the gym at mics. all? You've been staying strong? I actually haven't been. I just, uh, I've been trying to get in, but I just, all my time is dedicated to other uh, stuff right you now. You can't fit so. through the door? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I've actually down like 30 pounds since I've moved down here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm all weak and skinny now. No, I love it. I love it, Zach. Uh, what have you been doing for fun when not working or uh, performing? Something? Did you go to ACL or anything like that? Or no. Um, KFC or anything? Really, I'm just trying to stay in and save money, and uh, I play guitar on my off time. I, really? Uh, you yeah. play guitar? Have we ever yeah. had you play guitar no, on this yeah, show? You know how to play guitar? Yeah. Matt, what do you think? Should we give this guy a shot? Let's see what happens here. Very rarely do you get a fat boy playing guitar. This is a rare treat. Very rare. Again, like an Asian drug addict or like a black pedophile. This is a fat guitar player. Normally, uh, all right. Can't think of really any fat guitar jokes right now. But, uh, John Popper. All right, here we go. Wow. I'm screwing this up real bad, guys. Sorry. Calls me Goliath and I wear the David mask. Guess the stones are coming too fast for her now. I'd like to believe I can bring up the past. 
All the stones that are thrown are building up a wall. I have become cumbersome to my girl. Wow. Wow. Look at that. My goodness gracious. That was absolutely incredible. I was more nervous for that. Holy shit. Uh, that sounded like Sound Garden, which reminds me, <laughs> I performed in the Boston Garden uh, this weekend uh. in Madison Square Garden the weekend before. You can catch a lot of the comedians you saw tonight performing in actual gardens uh, <laughs> around Austin. No, that was great. How long Thank have you been you. playing guitar for? 25 years. Wow. Look at that. That's incredible. I didn't play a lot when I was uh, training for Strongman, though. So, like, I'm pretty, like, if you're good at music, I'm eh. If you're not good at music, I'm really good. Were you in, like, <laughs> a, like, like bands growing up, like the Alvarosa Village? No, or? actually, I mean, I played with some people here and there, but everyone in my family's a musician. I'm actually, like, the worst musician in my family, <laughs> and I play the least amount of instruments, so. But you can beat them up. Yeah, so. exactly. So. That's true. That's all that I'm, matters. I'm also the tallest and biggest, so. Yeah. You're, sh- you're shredded and you shred. <laughs> Thank you. Zach, I love it. You've been on the show quite a few times. You always yeah. do good. You already have a joke book, right? Yes, I do. Thank All right. You. Well, then there you go. Another great Thanks, performance guys. by Zach Gallman. Let's keep going through it. Let's get another one up here. He's a big guy, but his hair is thinning. All right. Kit Hudson. Uh, this looks like a new name. This should be exciting. Kit Hudson, let's see what happens here. Here he is, Kit Hudson. One more time for Kit Hudson, everybody. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, So I was the best man at an interracial wedding. And uh, no matter what my uh, best friend said, it's okay that he married a white. <laughs> My biggest concern uh, during that wedding was when uh, his family asked me to tie his grandfather's tie. Luckily, <laughs> luckily he said that it was the most pleasant experience he had out of the times a white man has tied a knot around his neck. Do I look proud? I should look proud because it was pleasant. Uh, Kit Hudson. Really, uh, really, that that all sounds true. 100% true. Wasn't necessarily as funny as it was brutally honest. There was a second there when you said that you had to tie the grandfather's tie in which I thought to myself, well, a noose joke is coming here. And then you really took your time and you surprised us all by doing exactly that. Uh, Am I correct in assuming that this all really happened? This all really happened, yes. Wow. And your uh, white... So what, explain to us again. This is a white girl marrying a, a black man. A black man, yes. A, a, an Australian white female marrying an American black male, yes. Okay. And you're friends with the black man? I know it's hard to believe, but yes. Wow, yeah. That is hard to believe. When the, when the grandfather said this to you, it was the grandfather, right? The, yes. Did, was, did, was there any hint of sarcasm in his voice? No. Hmm. No, he's, he's very honest, which made me very uncomfortable. Yes. Kit, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, zero days. This is your first time ever. Wow, look at that. There's the sheep of the first time. Kit Hudson. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. What made you want to start stand-up comedy here? You have a, like, state trooper energies or something like that. 
I've uh, always wanted to just entertain people, and uh, I realized I couldn't act. Right. You can't yeah. sing, you can't dance. Nope, none of those things. But I've been writing comedy for a long time. Yeah. And I uh, just didn't have the balls to perform it. What made you start this week? What made you have the balls to sign up for this show? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's a lot like uh, my first kiss. I was holding out for that one special girl. There you go. It's really, really... How dedicated are you and, to comedy? Uh, Kill Tony is that one special girl that I wanted to do stand-up for for the very first time, so... That me. Yes. Thank you very uh. much, yes. Thank you. There you go. Again, I saw that coming 40 seconds away, much like you're uh, You have a very special delivery style kit. Um... All right, so you just started stand-up. What have you been doing uh, for work up until this point? I've uh, been in the Army for the last uh, 11 years. Oh, wow, an American hero, everybody. What do you do in the Army? Uh, for During active duty, I was dropping bombs during right. active duty. Yeah, Where then, at? Uh, I was in uh, Oahu, Hawaii. You're dropping bombs in Hawaii? I was. Jesus Christ, what, uh, what <laughs> Army are you Which fighting are? for? The Japanese, apparently. My goodness. No, uh, that's where I was stationed. I went to Afghanistan, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we see how that ended up. Uh, My I bad. <laughs> uh, so, Kit, what's your love life like? You seem like a good-looking guy for someone that loves uh, the flavor of water. You look like the start version of the create a player on like an army ranger game or something like that. Like, level one, recruiter level. Your name's Kit. <laughs> no, I, uh, I am married. Oh, married, okay. Yes. All I right. asked my wife whether or not I should go out tonight with this, and she said, well... I haven't seen your hair that short without it, so no, I don't want you to go out like a shaved testicle. So I was like, all right. What does your wife do for work? She is a uh, mom right now. Yeah, we just moved out here. Oh, how many kids do you have? Just one. Just one. Boy or girl? Boy. (laughs) I was going to ask, or I was going to answer the how old question. Uh How old's the boy? He turns two next month. Okay. All right. What do you like about him? Oh. What's his pronouns? That's a good question. We did move here from California, so that's a valid question. Yeah. What part of California did you move from? Uh, we were in Green Valley, just outside of uh, Valencia. Or... Oh, shit. Yeah. It's All up right. in the mountains. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. And you just moved here to Austin? Yeah, uh, we moved to New Braunfels two months ago. New Braunfels. How do you like it out there? We love it. I was originally born in San Antonio and raised, you know, Texas in Arizona. So I was very excited to get the fuck out of California. You have a truck? Uh, Yes. We bought it before uh, we moved to Texas. Right. Yeah. You can't just have a truck in California. Like a RAV4 or? No. Tony knows what it is. What? It's a Silverado. Of course it's a Silverado. Thank you very much. Of course it is. Texas edition or regular pussy version? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, my people? If you ain't got that Texas edition, you get the fuck out of my state. <laughs> Just kidding, Kit. Any special skills or talents? Any fun facts about you? You know any like magic tricks or anything like that? Regular pussy edition. To answer your first question. Yeah, we're past that. But, we're uh, past that question, Kit. No, uh, no, I, follow I my lead, Kit. I don't know anything. Uh, I, I, I was following it. I don't have any other skills. Nothing? So I'd rather answer the Silverado question. No. Really? Nine. No, I, I, I am good in the... Good in the what? No, I'm not good in anything. Were you about to brag about being good at sex for a second there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounded like you almost said I'm good in the no. bed? I was... I was never going to. Do you have any special maneuvers that you do in the bedroom? You do like the Afghani, uh, (laughs) 
the Afghani uh, sex trick where you wrap your girlfriend in a sheet and then fuck her? Yes. All right. Congrats. If you guys are going to groan about that Afghani jokes, then I'm getting out of here. I'm going to end this Thank show you. early tonight. That was good. Thank you. Yes. You ever just fuck her and throw a handful of sand at her face? <laughs> no, but I will. Jeez. Hey, Please. come on. We're what? having fun here tonight. Yeah. Hans, you think I'm going over the line? What's going on? I was just going to add on to that, the, the riff. I was just going to be like, oh, do you ever uh, fuck her and then you leave and then the guy that she was fucking initially comes back like in Afghanistan? By the way, Hans, pro tip, you don't have to say I was going to make the riff yeah, and then say, say the riff. You just say the riff. I'm really nervous right now. Thank you for having me. This is an <laughs> honor. Hans Kim, ladies and gentlemen. Kit. Uh, yes, sir. I liked your performance, and uh, you're going to get one of those joke books, my friend. This Congratulations. Thing, Welcome man. to stand-up comedy. His first ever time on a stage. Kit. Hudson. Thank you. What do you guys think? Should I pull one more name out of this bucket? All right. Okay. I'm going to go deep in here. Really mix it up. Let's see what happens here. Go real deep. Let's see what happens. Arlene Hayes, everyone. This is another new name for sure. I know a real new name when I see one, and I would remember in Arlene Hayes. Here comes Arlene, everybody. Come on, it's your final bucket pull of the night. Make some noise for Arlene, everybody. So I just flew in. I took, I took Spirit. Yeah, hell yeah, $70 round trip. Anybody with me? That's right. Uh, so I'm convinced that Spirit Airlines is the only company where if you fail the competency test, you're guaranteed the job. Uh, so today, I went on a walk around the place I'm staying, and I came back, and there was a very insightful news article talking about how there's a lack of women that are firefighters, and I thought that's great, because the only thing that probably cares about gender equality is fucking fires. Am I right? All right. Well, that's my time. Thank you. All right. 50 seconds from Arlene Hayes. Welcome to the show, Arlene. How are you? I'm doing good. Hell yeah. Is this yeah. Sh- how long you been doing stand-up? Uh, this is my fifth time in three years. Fifth time in three yes. years. Yep. Hell yeah. You have that's the, right. You have the work ethic of... Uh, that's right. Uh, you know what? I'm just going <laughs> to stop right there. Yeah. Uh, All right. I'll let you finish your own punchline on that one, folks, depending on where you want to take it. Yeah. Um, Arlene, so why have you only done stand-up five times in three years? Um, I only do stand-up when I need to feel something. Uh Uh-huh. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever thought about jumping off a bridge? Uh, (laughs) Are you on a lot of medication? Uh, No, I'm on no no medication. Nope. Okay. None. Arlene, what do you do for work? Uh, I work a corporate office job. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. How do you like it? Uh, it's okay. I mean, I just pretend like I'm somebody else to get through the day, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you do at the office job? Uh, I I'm, I'm market insurance. Yes. Oh, wow. That's right. Holy shit. <laughs> Have you ever uh, thought about going on medication? There you go. Uh, no. I, w- I would never. No. I'm good. Okay. Uh, what do you like to do for fun? Um, go to the dog park and, and talk to the other dog people. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, Red Band, do you have a question for her? <laughs> yeah. You talk to the dog people? Yeah, the, the dog owners. Okay, do you have a dog yourself, or do you just are you just so lonely? Uh, have we I finally? Have a dog. Did, how many of you think we found the world's loneliest woman here yeah. tonight? I... Arlene, how would it make you feel to make out with Hans Kim right now on this show? Oh no, no, 
I can't. I, I'm married. Oh, she's married, yeah. everybody. So well, what? Oh. So what? No, just kidding. I hung out with Arlene yesterday. She has a beautiful husband that knows MMA. Oh, really? Yeah. Your husband does MMA? He does. And comedy, too. Yep. Wait, what? He does comedy. Oh, he does comedy, yeah. too? Really? Yes. Is he here? Yes, he is. What's yeah. his name? Joshua Harris. Joshua Harris. How yes. many of you think we should bring Joshua Harris up here for a minute? Yeah, Ladies hell and yeah. gentlemen, this is one Woo! minute of comedy from MMA fighter and comedian Joshua Harris, everybody. Hell yeah. Let's see what happens here. Oh. oh, wait, what? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, here's a minute from Joshua Harris. You stay, right, uh, stay on the stage, Arlene. I'm sorry. Stay on the stage, Arlene. Yeah, stay up here with me. This is a minute of comedy. One more time for Joshua Harris, everybody. So I've been trying out CBD oil. Yeah, it's not really working out for me, though. I think I'm going to switch back to like water-based lubricant. You guys think that porno sets unrealistic expectations? I do. You know, like the first time I ever had sex, I was like, where the fuck is the camera crew? <laughs> you know, where's the fluffer? I need a fluffer. All right, next joke. Uh, I... <laughs> I just watched that movie, Mrs. Doubtfire. Have you seen that movie recently? Yeah, that is one movie you could not make today. Yeah. Because Robin Williams is dead. <laughs> and he was in the movie. There's a minute from Joshua Harris. Welcome to the show, right, thank Joshua. You. Thank wow. you. Wow. How are you, buddy? How long have you been doing stand up? Well, uh, seriously, since uh, June uh, 2020. Okay. Uh, first time ever, uh, January 2018. Okay. And uh, MMA, she was just completely lying about that, right? I mean, <laughs> what is it? The, unless unless her team? MMA stands for math, marriage, and academics, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, what is that? The wilting weight? Uh, you think I do academics? What? You think I do academics? What? Dude, I'm to, do you think I do academics? You look like you can. That's why the thing got a laugh. <laughs> Thank That's you. how comedy no, I works. Kicked, I kicked Hans Kim's ass yesterday, so, you know. It you tried. what? I kicked Hans Kim's ass yesterday. Did you, is this true, Hans? No, not at all. Why, are you, why, are your, why is your shirt tucked in in the front, but not the back? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, his wife liked that one. Hans is asking the tough questions My, here. My wife told me to do this. She said this is the, the look. Is wow. this not the look? Maybe, maybe don't get your advice from your suicidal corporate office working <laughs> wife. Did she tell you that or did one of her friends at the dog park tell her that? <laughs> oh my, God. my goodness gracious. Right, how, how long have you two been married for? Since t uh, 2019. 2019. Where'd yeah. you meet her at? High school. High school, okay. Yeah. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. 31. What, what were Years you doing old. at a high school? Yeah, what, gra <laughs> what grade is she Oh, in? you guys dated for a long time. Just looking for chicks, bro. <laughs> you guys dated for like, what, 10 years or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's adorable. Wow. Yeah, man. Is that the only girl you've ever had sex with? <laughs> is this going to be on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer, you man. Okay. You're like, you're like, How about you? Is this the only guy you've ever had sex with? <laughs> <laughs> no way. Wow. Look at that. That's what domestic violence looks like, everybody. <laughs> She beats me all the time, guys. Hell yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Um, was she kidding about the... You guys are all kidding about the MMA thing? Or are you no, literally... I do, yeah, no, I do mixed martial arts. Really? Uh, shout out to uh, Lady Breeze Fight Club. Uh, that's my uh, teacher. What? Lady Breeze? Yeah, he's a... Uh, uh, Why does he sound like a douche? 
<laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe said that, sir. He's a, a feminine. Yeah, male. you know what, Lady Breeze? I'm in Austin, Texas, my friend. <laughs> and with a name like that, I don't care what you're trained in. You come here, get a little cup of ass whoop, all right? <laughs> you want to you wanna kick his ass? Come by. Let's do it. We're going to edit that out of the podcast. <laughs> we're going to edit that out. It's and just for back. you guys here. I don't think Lady Breeze is in the audience tonight. <laughs> but yeah, that guy sounds tough as shit. He is, man. Yeah. Yeah. What does he specialize in? Like striking, jujitsu? What is it? Uh, pr- a, lo- pr- a lot of everything. Yeah, he- he's a jujitsu guy. Right. Or a feminine guy. No uh, key, uh, right? No key. No key, right? Yeah, definitely no key. Like <laughs> a, uh, booty shorts and a sports bra. Yeah. Uh, My goodness gracious. How many fights have you had? How many fights? No, I've, I've not fought. I don't fight. <laughs> I can't. I, I got I to gotta look out for this shit, you know what I mean? So you uh, just train? Yeah, oh. I, I do it for fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you think you will ever do that, or is it nah. something that... I, mean, got, I couldn't do comedy if I wanted to, like, train to fight every night, you know? Like, I got to, like, practice and shit. All right. Jesus it's, it's, Christ. So, is it, I mean, your girl is saying that she could barely feel anything, and she's about to kill herself. Do you have any... Do you have anything to say about that? I mean, like, have you tried, or I mean, are you just really fucking her life up, or what? I yeah. no, I'm in the same like I'm worse than she is. Do you like? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like everybody who who is <laughs> like like. Honestly, I think you both need to get fucked by a black guy. Uh, <laughs> there's only one way to solve this problem. Can we get a black guy up here? D madness, come on. <laughs> I am not used to doing comedy in front of this many white people, by the way. All right. I'm from well, Atlanta. <laughs> Joshua Harris and uh, Arlene Hayes. Why do you guys have different names? Because uh, of feminism. Uh. All right. There he goes. Joshua Harris and Arlene Hayes, everybody. Right. A Thank new minute so from this power couple. There you go. There's a couple little stocking stuffers for you. There you go. Tell Lady Breeze I said hello. <laughs> Lady Breeze. Why do I feel like they're not really married? I don't know what's going on there. Something's up, though. <laughs> Something's a little rotten in Denmark over there. You guys ready to bring this thing to a big close here, huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your final comedian of the night. One of the longest standing regulars, the longest standing regular in the history of the show, an absolute legend, undefeated, undisputed champion of regulars, the big red machine, William Montgomery! Wow, a standing ovation upon arrival. This crowd is hot. Standing ovation. I don't know who's running this fucking place, but I was just trapped in the goddamn walk-in freezer for 20 minutes. I'm freezing cold. Uh, Sorry, I'm back on my bullshit. I had seven kombuchas earlier. I just crop dusted the stage, so the good news is that by the time it reaches you, I'll be off stage. They say Jesus Christ was a liberal, and look at where it got him. (laughs) Let's give it up for Jesus Christ! Let's give it up for Yahweh! Let's give it up for the Son of Man! Do you know who I really feel sorry for? The butthole surfer's parents. <laughs> California just passed a new law requiring gender-neutral toys. I'm just trying to figure out where the fuck I'm supposed to buy balls now. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner's garage sale? I should have ended it after the... I shouldn't have added Caitlyn Jenner's... Okay, that's it. Thank you. William Montgomery with a powerful new minute of stand-up comedy. 
Unbelievable. William coming off of a week, an entire week of opening for uh, myself and Joe Rogan here at Vulcan Gas Company. Hans Kim was also on those shows. Uh, very, very, very exciting stuff. This guy on the top of his game. You're watching a man in his prime right now. And I'm not kidding. I'm also freezing fucking cold. I'm not fucking around. I was in that goddamn place for 20 minutes. What happened? I went in there to smoke a joint, and the fucking door shut, and I was trapped in the dark. It was freezing fucking cold. I'm wearing this goddamn T-shirt. Did it's you, probably 30 degrees in there. Did you, did you get to smoke the joint? Yeah, I did. I got way too fucking high in there, and then I got fucking paranoid that I'm never going to get out. And I knew I was going to have to fucking come on this stage very soon. It was horrible. Was there anything, was there anything in the cooler that you liked? Was there any drinks or food? Some or igloo coolers. Well, they had coolers inside of the cooler? They did some igloo brand coolers. That's the I best. bring that up. That's a new sponsor of mine. Oh, really? They reached out to me, yeah. Okay, now you're very famously as the crowd is aggressively yelling. We have yeah. I don't know out. who the fuck just said raisin bread. Shut your fucking mouth! Don't fucking throw me off. I'm literally freezing cold. How much raisin bread have you had this week? We found out you're newly addicted to raisin bread after gaining sobriety a few months ago. How much raisin bread did we get through this it's like week? Like three and a half loaves <laughs> since Thursday. Since Thursday. Oh, my goodness. That is a loaf a day, basically. Pretty much. Wow. <laughs> that math works. Yeah, it's about a loaf a day. I can't quit fucking eating it. So, like, do you toast it? Do you put butter on it? Do you make sandwiches? Or do you just go one slice at a time, raw dog? Sometimes, if I'm feeling pretty down, I will just eat it a slice at a time. Wow. Grilled I cheese. start sitting in my fucking apartment. I'm feeling real down. I'm watching a bunch of wife swap, and I will fucking... I'll polish off a loaf or two. I don't know if y'all have seen wife swap recently. What a hell of a show. <laughs> That's a great show. Can you give us some examples of what you love about Wife Swap? Like, is there something particular that's happened on the show that you find extremely entertaining? I think the world wants to know. Uh, oh, man. You caught me. I haven't been watching Wife Swap. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. No. The rare, you busted me. The rare lie from William Montgomery. <laughs> oh, no. Everything else he said tonight was completely honest. Everything else is true. No, I, ha yeah, I haven't been watching that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You, you spent the whole weekend uh, at a comedy festival yeah. in uh, what? Eureka, California. In Eureka, California. Two years in a row, you going out and headlining Eureka. How was that? It was fun. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Anything, anything interesting happen out there? I was able to smuggle like probably a, uh, like an ounce of weed back in my baggage. I felt cool doing that. Wow. You did? I did, yeah. I have it in my back of my apartment. Did, where'd you put it in your bag? Did you put it like in a sock or something special? Did you try it all to hide it? or like? Uh, I didn't at all. I just put the bag in there. I was feeling pretty down. I had been eating a bunch of fucking raisin bread. My sets were honestly a fucking disaster up there. You it didn't turned like into a nightmare. It turned into a what am I fucking doing with my life? This has turned into a giant fucking mistake. I was up there trying to make people fucking laugh. I wasn't able to do it. It literally, it was sort of a, a time of soul searching for me. I think I've made a horrible mistake. And then I get fucking trapped in the goddamn freezer. I start freezing. I'm high as shit in there. Wait, that happened in California as well? Yeah, I got trapped in a fucking freezer up there as well. Oh, wow. my God. You should really stop going inside a freezer. Uh, I don't think I'm going to fucking stop. I love it in there. <laughs> a nice fucking black freezer! It's freezing cold! I love how that feels! I love being cold! I love being cold! Nobody's going to stop me in there! Ain't nobody stopping me in the freezer. I promise you all that. I stayed in the freezer. I 
Let's give it up for Igloo! Wow. Nobody does it like this guy. This is, without a doubt, peak performance. I mean, the, the crowd... I'm trying to get money from Igloo! I need that Igloo money! I'm really close to living on the streets! I'm about to be homeless! Sometimes you were supposed to cheer at that part. God. Sometimes I wonder what it's like if like if somebody like if somebody brought like their girlfriend to this show for the first time or something. <laughs> you did? You brought her? This is your first time seeing the show? What do you think about this moment right now, lady? God, just get out of here! <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> William, you're an absolute fucking saint. You're on top of the world. You're out. You're headlining. You're selling out shows. You're opening for Joe Rogan. You're on the best shows in the city. And he's a Thank product you. of here, Austin, Texas, everybody. Come on, make some noise for William, everyone. How loud can this place get for our guest tonight? His first time on panel, Hans Kim, everybody. How about one more time for the Kill Tony Band, everyone? P Screwball, Peanut Butter Whiskey, Michael Gonzalez, D Madness, Matt Muling, and the great John D's on the keys. Make sure you follow all those guys on social media. They are the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in. It is absolutely incredible. It's Hans Kim with a machete and me and Red Band. Very cool stuff. Go to RyanJEbelt.com for all these Kill Tony prints. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, the uh, the uh, what appears to be the uh, Liquid Death After Party. Following Liquid Death? Uh, yeah, following. I fucking love Liquid Death. Immediately following this show right here, right now, at Vulcan Gas Company. Unlock your phones, hang out, have another drink, mingle, have fun. Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. Good Thanks, night, guys. everyone. Thank you. <laughs>